Okay, welcome to the 23rd lecture uh, in the 2011-2012 Otara University of Congress English Lecture Series. Today we have Miss Mayumi Hirano. She is a lecturer at the State University of New York, Binghamton. And she is going to give us a talk today about teaching Japanese in the U.S. Miss Hirano. Thank you very much for invitation too. Um, I'm teaching Japanese in, in the U.S. and this is my topic about lecture today. And my school is the State University of New York. And do you know where New York is? Maybe. Uh, you know New York City. This is the this strange shape one day to New York City. And Binghamton. Have you ever heard of Binghamton? It's a city, actually, but it's a small town. Um, whenever I, uh, my student, my student, or my friends ask me where is Binghamton, I explain them it's between New York City and Niagara Falls. <laughs> <laughs> That's right? Um, to New York City, it takes about three and a half hours, and to Niagara Falls, it takes like about four hours. So if you want to visit both, that's a great city, like a big city. And um, I just want to introduce about myself first. Um, my name is Mayumi Hirano, and I grew up in Sapporo, and I went to Fuji Women's University. How many of you have heard my university? <coughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, it's a small university in Sapporo, and I had Dr. Kranke when I was um, senior, no, junior year there, and it was right before I did my exchange study in the U.S. And I'm so glad because in my first and second year there, it was there were not many opportunities for me to speak English in class. So um, I had some practice with him, and I did my exchange study in the U.S. in Indiana, and came back as in my senior year at Fuji and took his class again. I'm glad you are teaching again there. And um, after I graduated Fuji, I went back to the States. I applied for a graduate school in Tennessee here. And luckily, I got accepted with um, scholarship. I did a teaching assistantship and studied teaching Japanese in Tennessee. And before I went to Tennessee, I had no idea about teaching Japanese. I have never thought about teaching Japanese, actually. And it was my first experience. But I, I did, I have done teaching English in Japan. And it was totally different experience of my teaching English in Japan and teaching Japanese in America. And also this is, um, first I taught in the university, so that was the most difference between teaching uh, English in high school and teaching Japanese in university. So university students usually take Japanese for their purpose. It's not mandatory. They don't have to take Japanese. Okay? But like in your case, you have to study Japanese here. Like Japanese students have to study, I mean English here in junior high school and high school. So motivation was the biggest difference. And reaction, so students are so motivated, so they react really well. They ask questions, many questions, and um, they want to speak, they want to communicate in Japanese. That was the big difference I, um, I saw in American universities in Japanese class. And that's why I get fascinated teaching Japanese, and I wanted to teach Japanese as a job, as an occupation for my life. Um, that's why I applied for a job after I finished my master's degree in Tennessee. It was my master's in education, and my concentration was English, as, uh, teaching English as a second language. But like with the master's degree, I got the job in University of Nevada, Las Vegas. So I taught Japanese language in Las Vegas. Then I studied in Wisconsin again. I, um, I received my second master in Japanese linguistics from University of Wisconsin-Madison. Then now I'm teaching in 
uh, New York, State University New York in Binghamton. So I'm moving around the U.S. I finished my degree um, at Fuji in 2000. <coughs> then I went to America and I've been teaching about like 10 years. This is my ninth year teaching Japanese. So um, now, now I just give you the brief introduction about myself and I want to ask you about like I want to know about you. Um, have you how many of you have studied Japanese as a foreign or second language? That's it. <laughs> and you are like international students? You like not studying Japanese here? Okay, not many. Okay. How about have you studied in a university or college in the US? Oh. Are you from the US? From the US? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys know. And also, uh, are you planning or interested in, like, want to study in the US? Thank you. Good. How about, have you taught Japanese or, like, any, um, okay, have you taught or currently teaching Japanese? Even like a volunteer or tutor. Thank you very much. And, are you planning to teach or like, want to teach Japanese something? Oh, great, great, great. <laughs> That's a great job. So, okay, so now I know you a little bit, but I just want um, you to know what I do today, what I show you um, today is my way, okay? It's part of the way. Like some people do the same way, some people might not. Like, so teaching is depending on institutions or textbook who can be um, instructors uh, themselves. So each instructor should have different teaching strategies or teaching styles. So don't misunderstand this is like whole US do like my way, okay? But I try my best for teaching and I want you to know um, what people run like in the, uh, what students learn the Japanese in the U.S. Okay. You already know, but <laughs> okay. So uh, let me go through here. So today's content. Um, so first, I will give you the general information about uh, Japanese language in the U.S. and about my school, the Bingo. And also, second. Um, what I do on the first day. So Japanese language teaching is the broad term. You might be advanced because you are in Japan already studying. But like, so I want to talk about the first day of the totally elementary class, okay? So you might remember, right? Okay, the third one is teaching grammar slash speaking. Um, we teach grammar. And I believe grammar is important for Japanese language, for any language study. But like, um, not just grammar, you have to, students have to speak when they learn some grammar. And fourth one is teaching writing. This means just hiragana, katakana, kanji, not essays or hakubu. And also the third, fifth one, and teaching culture. And culture is also a big term. What is culture? What is Japanese culture? And if you have any questions or like um, objections, you can ask me after class. And for the questions, I want to answer if I can. But like, um, if you disagree with me or if you have any opinion, suggestions, I want to learn from you too. So please ask or give me some suggestion too. So, for about general um, information, if, if you are an American, you should know, but uh, this is the chart uh, showing the popularity of the language other than English in America. And you can see, um, this is 2009, and top one, like the popular one, hi, <laughs> I heard some, it should be Spanish. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so you already know um, Mexico is really close, and in Texas, I heard half of the people should be bilingual. And I lived in Las Vegas, Nevada, and it's southern Nevada, it's south, 
the south part of America. So sometimes when you see the advertisement of the supermarket, the back side can be like Spanish. And when you choose some languages, when like ADM or telephone, um, you can choose English or Spanish. So Spanish is the most popular one. How about second? French. 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 French, thank you. So French, I don't know what this one. And third one? German. German. How about fourth? Good guess. One more European language. Italian, okay. Italian. Italian. And fifth one? Thank you. Japanese. Can you see? So this one like Spanish, French, German, Italian, those are all Europeans. And this sixth one, you see it now. Sixth one, Chinese language. But Chinese is getting really, really popular now. And um, does anyone know this? No American students? This stand for? No American students. <laughs> okay, so this is American Sign Language. So um, this is not foreign language uh, popularity. This is language other than English. So American Sign Language. Thank you. And also Latin, Arabic, and Russian. These are the ten popular languages in the U.S. now. And you can see Japanese popular. And it depends on region actually. Um, when I was in Vegas, Las Vegas, um, sightseeing is really popular, and there are many travelers in Vegas. So Japanese is competing the second part with French. Can you believe it? Japanese is the second popular language in my school. And my school, um, it's close to uh, New York City, so there are many Chinese immigrants or American born Chinese in New York City. So, and, but they can speak well, but sometimes they don't write well. In that case, they take Chinese. So Chinese is a big program in, Japan, in my institution in New York. Um, I think this order is the right kind of, um, kind of number six and the same bit <coughs> of budget in my institution, but this is kind of popular. Okay. And also, um, here is the enrollment. The first thing, first line you can see, in 60, we see Japanese part. There are only less than 2,000 students who are learning Japanese. And now, you can see in 70, for more than twice, more, um, about twice, much, much more, much, much more, much, 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 much more. Okay, now, so it, you can see all the foreign languages are getting popular, but like Japanese is no exception. Okay. So um, there are many schools who, which offer Japanese language now in the universities. And also there are some high schools or junior high schools who, uh, which offer Japanese language too. So it's getting really, really popular. Okay. So you, if you are planning want to teach Japanese, there is a chance in America. Okay. Um, so now I just want to talk about my school before Bingham University. So Japanese courses in Binghamton, um, we had minor before, and now we still have. But like last year, we started Japanese major. Okay. So students major in Japanese. But usually, Japanese major, what you can do?